all makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I am pretty excited for this video because I'm going to be talking about a few different makeup products that make me angry. Some of these are a little bit more serious and some of them are a little bit more silly. So let's just go ahead and jump on in. Alright, so the very first product, which is one that's a little bit more silly that inspired this video, is actually a liner from NYX, and this is their glitter liners. They used to be sold on the Ulta website, and they were in the eye category of makeup products, so I obviously assumed that it was going to be an eyeliner because it was with the eyes it was a liner like it was just like a little tiny tip and it was glitter and I had always wanted to try a glitter liner so I went ahead and bought three shades at one time which was my mistake so whenever I went to use them they burned my eyes so bad it was crazy like my eyes would cry and they would sting and I would keep using them at first just because I was like kind of pushing through the pain because I really wanted that glittery effect and at some point I looked on the packaging and it said not for use on the eyes what what else are, where where else am I supposed to put a glitter liner a glitter liner that was in the eye section so that annoyed me a lot and I ended up getting rid of those liners I'm pretty sure or else they're in my declutter pile right now um, they're somewhere but I don't use them anymore because something about the ingredients I just feel like like what was the point of that and now if you look at them on the Ulta website they do say body liners they're no longer in the eye section so I'm assuming someone else complained or something I'm not sure but that was the product that inspired me for this video I'm not like super like worked up about it or anything because they fixed it but it was still like a waste of money and it was like it was just it was a waste of money basically all right so the next product that makes me really annoyed is the lack of brow products for redheads and I will say that you know at this point if you do a little research you can find something for yourself I definitely have quite a few different options now that I enjoy I feel like there are a lot of brands who have tried to do a redhead shade but it can go very wrong um, I've I've experienced a lot of like super orange or super red like there's just like no natural perfect color that's has just enough warmth in it to like go with your hair but also not look like crazy colored brows and I mean I feel like so many brands do a redhead shade for fake redheads when you have like a really deep rich red auburn hair which most people don't have naturally um so then like that's that's not an option like for me because like my hair I mean, I feel like it looks darker on camera, but it is a, pre a pretty light red, so it's just, it's a struggle, and even if I hold it up to my eyebrows now, you can see that I'm wearing a taupe shade, which is too cool toned, so it's like you always have to mix, you always have to add other things, and then there, there are brands that don't even, like, recognize redheads at all, like, there are brands, and you look at their eyebrow products, and it's, like, blonde, brunette, and black, and that's all they have. I know that redheads are like, is it like 2% or 1% of the population or something like that and then even less because if you just take like mostly girls who wear makeup. Um, so I'm sure it's not like a huge selling product but it would still be so great to have. So that's one of the products that makes me frustrated because it's the struggle to find. So the next product. I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this but I have been catfished. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the picture on the screen of the beautiful palette that I thought I was going to get, that I thought I was buying. This deep, rich, purple palette that's affordable. I was so excited about it. And then, um, you know, I went to my mailbox and I realized that this was not the palette that I thought I had bought. In. So this is what the palette looks like in real life. Here's what it looks like online. Do, do you see the subtle, subtle differences? <sighs> so this palette is from Makeup Revolution. It is the Reloaded Visionary palette. I thought this was so pretty online. I was so excited about it. And I still think it's pretty in person, but it's not the same palette at all. Like it looks completely different. And I don't know like how they can get away with editing their photo that much. 
when I bought this, it was pretty brand new to the Ulta website, so there were no reviews yet. But now if you go on the reviews, like every single one is like this, it, it looks nothing like the picture online. It looks nothing like the picture online. Like I know that it's sometimes it's hard to get the perfect picture of the shades that you're using um, and, or the shades that you're trying to photograph, but they are a professional a professional makeup brand they're sold in Ulta like can they really not get a and true at least close to true picture of this it looks like they took a picture of this palette and then they turned up the saturation and they turned up the contrast like all the way up and that's how this picture came about so like I said I think this is pretty but I guess I just it's frustrating because I thought I was gonna get the prettiest purple palette only seven dollars like I thought it was a steal and this just looks like um like the Norvina palette basically so I'm not like worked up over it I'm not returning it I just think it's stupid <laughs> and that I was catfished and I think it's definitely frustrating annoying anger ang ang angering angering all right so this next thing is probably either one or two on the top of my list of things that make me angry and I'm sure a lot of you guys understand but I want to kind of dive into it a little bit more and this is just going to be poor shade range with foundations and concealers like and I, the reason why I say I'm going to dive into it more is because I feel like you know brands have came out with foundation ranges like Tarte and Beauty Blender and they were literally torn apart for their shade range and I get it I get that their shade range was not perfect, but they still had at least a certain amount of shades. And even like with the Tarte one, there were so many shades missing on the deep skin tone range. But, you know, there was a little, little bit something there for everyone. And they, like I said, they were ripped to shreds. I understand it. I'm not defending them. But there are brands out there that release three, four, five shades constantly in foundations. And I never ever hear anyone talk about it. And the reason this like really was brought to my attention, I went through and screenshotted some foundations from Ulta, but I've seen it in the foundations and I've seen it in the concealers. Sometimes I go on Ulta and I just think like, hmm, like what have I never seen before? And I just look through like the categories and I see things that I think, hmm, should I try that? Most of the time I don't because I get hyped up with the new releases, but I do like to go through and look at things. And I have noticed several foundations where the, the shade range is so poor, it's not even funny. So first off, we have the Note Cosmetics Detox and Protect Foundation, and there are only five shades. Next, we have the ELF Online Only Acne Fighting Foundation, only three shades. ELF is the absolute worst at this. ELF foundation ranges stink, like it's not even funny. Um, next is the ELF Cosmetics Barely Beauty. Be beautifully bare <laughs> I was about to say barely beautiful that's probably not the best foundation name beautifully bare foundation serum and there are only three shades next we have the Pacifica crystal blur illuminating foundation only four shades the the darkest shade is tan neutral the darkest shade is tan like what the heck um next is the essence fresh and fit awake awake makeup jeez foundation and there is only four shades again the darkest shade Fresh Sun Beige. That's, that's the darkest shade, is beige. Next is the Physician's Formula Nude Wear Touch of Glow Foundation, and there are only four shades. Next is the Mali Beauty Complexion Perfection Soft Focus Foundation, five shades. And then this one I wanted to mention, which is kind of interesting, this is the Paracone No Makeup Foundation Serum. And it only comes in one shade. It says it is a universally flattering shade, but I saw reviews and people say that it, it really is a foundation, that there's pigment to it. And most of the reviews are positive, but I'm just, I'm so confused on how you could have one shade. And I know that there are different foundations that like, are like, they start out white and they like, you mix them into your skin. They're supposed to be a tint and they're supposed to like turn into your skin tone. And I guess I get that, but even those ones normally have a few different shades, like light, medium, dark at least. And this is just one universally flattering shade. Just one shade. $60. Next is the Juice Beauty Phyto Pigments Youth Cream Compact Foundation. Only five shades. The darkest one is medium tawny. 
Um, here's one that I actually wanted to try, but I passed out on because of the shade range. This is the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. Only four shades. And then the last thing I wanted to mention that also gets on my nerves, which is not quite anywhere near as bad as not having shades, but whenever companies come out with minis of shades, it's always only like one or two shades. For example, the one I pulled up here is the It Cosmetics um, Travel Size Your Skin But Better. And they have two shades now. They used to only have medium, but now they have light and medium travel size shades. And it's just stupid. It's like, do you think that fair people don't travel? Do you think that tan people don't travel? Do you think that deep people don't travel? Because I'm pretty sure we all travel. So the next thing that really frustrates me about certain makeup products is when they have really bad names. And I think that this can be very subjective because everyone has different levels of what they do and don't like. And I get that. Like someone like said to brought to my attention about like Jeffree Star's lipstick in the shade Abused and it's like the color of a bruise. And as someone who was in a like abusive relationship, I that doesn't even, that doesn't bother me one bit. I'm like, okay, like whatever. Like it doesn't doesn't matter to me, I guess. Whereas someone else out there might think that's horrible. Um, same with like Lolita or, you know, there's all different names that I think are very subjective. Under Eye Dread, I know that um, Kat Von D's gotten, gotten into a trouble a lot for different names. And I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong, like whatever, that's fine. You get to the choice to choose what names that you want to buy or don't want to buy. The name that specifically upsets me that I was thinking about that inspired this is when products are named G-Y-P-S-Y. I'm not even going to say that loud because I think it's a really offensive word and okay let's let's dive into this in America it's not an offensive word I get it it's it's been normalized people say it all the time you don't even think twice people say like oh you gypped me which I think is offensive as well um but in other cultures and in other countries and in Europe it is a racial slur it just is and people like to say like, oh, like how can you know that everything is offensive everywhere? Like you can't know. But then you tell them like, well, this is offensive and they still want to keep saying it because it's fine in America. And I'm like, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. So I will not buy any products with that name on it. There was a glitter and glow from Stila named that. And I thought it was the most beautiful shade ever. Like, I loved it. It's a light purple. I love the Glitter and Glow formula. I want to give them my money, but I'm not going to buy it. And I'm not going to, like, sit on, like, do my makeup. And someone's like, what shade are you wearing? Like, I'm not going to say it. Like, I think it's so stupid. And I just don't understand why a company can't take the two seconds to research it and see that, oh, like, Stila sells in Europe, like, I'm pretty sure they sell in Europe. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that they sell in Europe. So why can't they take the two seconds to see like, hmm, is this word offensive? <sighs> like, don't they have like a team or something who like checks things and it's just frustrating. And there was a smaller indie brand, I'm not gonna name names or anything like that, but they were doing a competition for like naming a certain product and one of the winners name was the G word. And I messaged them, I was super polite, and I was like, I just wanted to let you know that for a lot of people, this is considered a racial slur, and I know people who will not buy this specifically if it's named that product because it's a racial slur. And they messaged back and they were like, thank you for letting us know, but we can't not use it just because of that reason. I'm like, what do you mean? It's a racial slur. Like, it's, it's offensive. And I know, like, there's, like, a whole thing, like, oh, everyone's offended nowadays, and it's like, yeah, because sometimes there's good reason. So I just really don't like that and you can feel free to disagree with me, but this is something you cannot change my mind on. Um, so yeah, and it's like you live and you learn and like I'm sure I said it in the past unknowingly, ignorantly, but once you learn that something is offensive and that it's not right to say, you shouldn't say it. So, and you shouldn't name your products after it. So that's, that's one of the things that makes me upset. So and like I said, it can be personal, like like I said, with the different like names that I mentioned, you know, different things can make different people upset and I totally understand. I just wish like brands are trying to be cool and edgy and do all these different things and I'm like, we can do that without being problematic. 
All right, so the last product that makes me angry, which I was kind of debating with myself, like, should I talk about it? Should I not talk about it? Because I feel like I can definitely go back and forth and I'm probably gonna get on a tangent and I'm probably gonna get worked up. So <sighs> the last thing that, gets, that makes me angry is mink lashes and not necessarily, well, yes, I don't like that they're being sold. I wish that we would do away with mink lashes because, you know, an innocent animal is being hurt because of them. Like, do you like, is having nice lashes really worth hurting animals especially when there are so many foam ink options and other like other materials that you can use without hurting an animal so the thing that really frustrates me is well for one brands that come out with mink lashes and then they claim to be cruelty free i see this all the time with indie brands i've seen it with huda beauty with um p louise makeup academy now they come out with lint mink lashes and then they say that they're cruelty free. There is no way you are cruelty free. That's just the truth. Um, and it's so stupid. Like, okay, I know I'm going to get into tangents. One time I was on Famebit, which is like an app that, um, it helps influencers or YouTubers, whatever, and sponsors connect. And there was a, um, campaign for mink lashes and it said mink lashes 100% cruelty free cruelty free cruelty free like they had it like three times in the thing and I was like there is no way that they can be cruelty free like how can you like keep saying that and try to push that agenda when it's not the truth so I may have been a little bit petty and I like went on there and I said like there's no way absolutely no way that these mink lashes are cruelty free and then I put my um sponsorship price to like a million dollars so it just frustrates me because it's not true and if you're gonna be if you're gonna sell mink lashes like just be honest and take away your cruelty free status because it's not there and what frustrates me even more is like specifically like p louise makeup academy i'm obsessed with their products i love them so much i love their artistry and they recently decided to add mink lashes into their line there is one set just one mink lash set that they're selling and it's like well then there goes like their entire line and I did make an order from them on something and I'm not gonna I may make one video on it but I'm never gonna like talk about it again after that like I'm gonna say like I got a bunch of their colored bases so in the future I'll say like I'm using a blue base or I'm using a black base I'm not gonna name it because I don't want to keep promoting them like I said I might want to do one do one video for reference but it's just so annoying that brands like is it really worth taking away your entire cruelty free status for a few pairs of mink lashes all right so i think that's everything for this video i'm sorry i got a little bit more negative today but it's okay to talk about negative things sometimes and i've just been wanting to film this video for a while so i hope you all enjoyed it definitely let me know what makeup products make you angry i would love to hear your thoughts and like i always say if you disagree with me that's fine but let's just remember to be respectful and courteous so that's everything i will see you guys in the next one bye